Now we're going to talk about how we do addition, in particular how carries work in addition, and how we do multiplication. So binary addition. So in binary addition, it's pretty simple to start out with since we only have 0 and 1s. We only have these four building blocks to start with. 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 or 1 plus 0 is 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2, which in binary is 1, 0. So how do we do addition with this? Well, it's just the same as in base 10. Here we want to add 0, 1 and 0, 1. We're going to first add the least significant bits. So 1 plus 1 is going to give us what? Well, it's going to give us 2 or 1, 0. So we put the 0 down here, and then we've got a 1 that we're going to carry. And just like we did in base 10, this carry then gets carried over to the next most significant bit. So now over here we're going to add 1 plus 0 plus 0, which is going to give us 1, and we have no carry out from here. So we succeeded in adding 1 and 1, and we got 2. Let's take a look at another example. So here we're going to add 186 to 55, and here are the binary versions of them, and we just go through the same way. So 0 plus 1 is going to give us 1, 1 plus 1 is going to give us 0 with a carry into the next bit. We can see how that works out. And here are all the carries we have. So here we had 1 plus 1, which gives us a carry, and a 0 down at the bottom. And if we look over here in the base 10, it's the same thing. So 6 plus 5 gives us 11, which gives us a 1 down here, and a 1 is a carry over to the next place. So let's take a look at another example of adding two 2-bit numbers. So we're going to do 2 plus 2, and we hope we get 4. So here's our math, 2, 1, 0, plus 2, 1, 0, and let's work it out. So 0 plus 0 is 0, we have no carry. 1 plus 1 is going to give us 0, and a carry out. So where does that carry out go? So the problem we have here is our result we got has three bits. It has this 1, the carry out, plus two zeros. And that's not surprising because to have four in binary, we need one zero zero. But we only had two bit numbers. So the problem we have here is that for our two bit numbers, the largest number we can represent is one one or three, and we want it to represent four. So what this is called is called an overflow. And an overflow is when we don't have enough bits to represent the result. So here we needed three bits for the result, but we only had two, so we had two bit numbers. So here we did two plus two and we got zero. Here's our zero, zero, zero. We didn't get four because we didn't have another bit for this one. If you want to add two plus two, you need to have three bit numbers in order to store the result. Now let's talk a little bit about multiplication. So in binary multiplication is equally simple. Zero times zero is zero, zero times one, or one times zero is zero, and one times one is one. So this is pretty straightforward. Now let's see how this works. Here we've got two numbers we're going to multiply. Here's our multiplicand, and here's our multiplier. Both of them are six bits in this case. And we're going to go ahead and multiply them just the way we would with normal multiplication. So the first step is to take this one and multiply it by the multiplicand and add it in. So here we go. One times that is just that value. Now we're going to shift over to do the next bit here. We're going to multiply this one by that value. So there we go. And these things down here, these are called partial products. And remember, we're going to add them up at the end. The next step here is to take this 0 and multiply it by there. And well, 0 times anything is just 0. And finally, we have 1 times this thing up here. We get another 1. Note we're shifting every time we move over. And then we have two more zeros. And finally, we take all of these partial products and we add them up to get our final value. And you'll note our final value here is not 6 bits. It's 12 bits. You've got to take out the right 6 bits when you're done to get the right result. So what did we do? Well, we shifted over and added. Shift, add, shift, add. That's how you do multiplication in binary. Now let's take a look at how we design multipliers. And there are two ways to do this. You can either do parallel multiplication or serial multiplication. So in parallel multiplication, we have the multiple can and the multiplier. These are our inputs. And these are n bits wide. And we're going to go ahead and do all these partial products. And each one of these partial projects, products, just taking one of these bits, it's either 1 or 0, and then either multiply, and multiplying by this. They all get shifted together, and we add them up to get our result. As you can see here, there are lots of adders. All of these things have to be added up together to get the result. The other way to do multiplication is serial multiplication. Here we have one adder, which is going to take our input, our multiple can and our multiplier, and they're just going to be shifted and go around and around and add them up. So here we have one adder, but we have to use it over and over again. Here we have lots and lots of adders, but we only need to use them once. Now in both of these cases, our n by n multiplication is producing two n output bits. So if we had a 32-bit register here and a 32-bit register here, we're going to get 64 bits out the other end. In MIPS, we deal with this with having a special high and low registers for getting the two halves of our 32-bit result. 
Now what we've seen here is that multiplication takes a lot of area. Here we need lots of adders, but we can trade off that area for time. Here we only have one adder, but we have to do lots and lots of times around a loop. Let's take a look at that in detail. So here we're going to do serial multiplications. Same thing we had before. Here's our multiplicand and our multiplier, and we're going to go ahead and multiply them together. So the first step is we're going to get this 1 and multiply it by the multiplicand and add that into our result. We're going to go through all of these steps and get our final product. Now here's our multiplicand in our, seri in our serial multiplier. Here's our multiplier and our product. So we're going to store the product in here as we go through and do the work. So the multiplicand is going to be shifted to the left. You saw that over here we were shifting it to the left. And the multiplier is going to be shifted to the right. And we're going to do that because we want to get the least significant bit. That's the bit that tells us what we do here. So this bit told us multiply by 1, this bit multiply by 0. Depending on whether that least significant bit is a 1 or a 0, we're going to tell the ALU to add in the multiplicand. So let's take a look at this. So the first step, we're going to check the least significant bit and add if 1. So here's our least significant bit. Over here it's 1. You can see it over here, it's also 1. And now what that tells us to do is we want to add it in. So why do we add it in? Well, you can see over here in our parallel products we added in. So now we take our multiple can, tell our adder to add, we add it in, and now we've got part of this added in. So now we've added in the first bit. Now we're going to go and shift everything. We're going to shift the multiple can to the left and shift the multiplier to the right. And what that does is it basically moves us over to this next point in our computation. So we tell this one to shift over, we tell this one to shift over, and now we do the same thing. Now we check and see if the least significant bit is 1. Well, here's this point over here. We're now looking over here. It's not 1, it's 0, so we're going to add in 0. And we see that over here. Here our least significant bit is 0. That tells the ALU to not add, so we keep the value the same. Now we do the same thing again. We shift the multiplicand over, we shift the multiplier over, and this is because we're moving over to this next point over here, so this has now been shifted over two times. So we've done one, two shifts. We check if the least significant bit is 1. Here it is 1, and so we're going to go ahead and add. So we take this value and we add it in. And that's the same as adding in this value over here. Now we do the final shift. We go over and we check the least significant bit. This time it's 0, so we don't do the add, and we get our result. So in serial multiplication, we did each one of these steps one after each other by shifting and adding, shifting and adding, and we added if the bit over here was 1. So here we can do this using just one adder, but it takes us lots of steps to get there. So now when we look at these parallel multipliers, so we said we had this big array of products here, this is going to have a lot of adders in it. And you can see where these adders come from. We're adding in the first part, the second part, third part, and the fourth part, and we're doing them all together. So this is going to be one bit added here, two bits added here, three bits added here, four bits added here, etc. All of these are adders that we're going to put together. So we need to build a whole bunch of adders to add everything up at the same time. This is going to be faster because we can do it all at the same time, but much larger. Let's take a look at how much larger. So here's a die. This is a chip, a picture of a computer chip with, an ad, with a multiplier from 1992 that ran at 100 megahertz in 800 millimeter technology, nanometer technology. Sorry, nanometer. And you can sort of see this design in here. Here are the product arrays, and it's this shape here which has been folded in half to make it fold into a square. And you can see kind of the fold going along the middle here. Now we go ahead to 1996 and what happened? Well, this thing got smaller and it runs almost twice as fast. 2002 got a lot smaller. Notice how the technology is getting smaller and smaller here. And it's now running a lot faster than it did before. And then we can go ahead to 2006 and now it's running even faster. So it went from 100 megahertz then up to 1600 megahertz and from 800 nanometer technology to 90 nanometer technology. So this is quite a progression over time. And now if we go back to 1992 and compare them, Here's how big the 2006 multiplier is compared to the 1992 multiplier. So multipliers used to be a problem to build them in parallel. That's why we did serial multiplication. But now that we can have so many transistors, they're not so much of a problem. In fact, if we take a look here, here's what a 2013 multiplier would look like. It's tiny compared to what we had in 1992. So these days, multipliers are really not a problem to put on a chip. So a question, serial versus parallel multiplication. Why did we prefer to do serial multiplication 20 years ago? Well, the reason we preferred it is it needed fewer adders, so it was easier to fit on a smaller chip. If we look here, we only had one adder for serial multiplication, but in parallel multiplication, we had to have a whole bunch of adders to add things up. 
So how many adders, or sorry, how many additions were done in this example we saw earlier for the serial multiplication? Remember, we're multiplying these two values together, and we went through this loop many times. How many additions did we need to do? Well, the answer is two. And we need to do two more additions because there are only two values in here with a one. So we need to add in this part and this part. These zeros here, we just didn't do an add when we went through and did our shift. Remember, we checked the least significant bit as we shifted it through. So, summary of addition and multiplication. We've now talked about unsigned or positive numbers. We talked about how calculations are basically the same as in base 10. So we have the same carries that go on here and the same issues with multiplication. We talked about how we have a limited number of bits, which means we have overflow can be a problem. If we try to compute something that needs more bits than we have, we get an overflow. We talked about how we can do addition without any problems, and multiplication is harder because you need this big array of adders, but we can still do it fast today. We talked about subtraction a little bit being difficult, and division is very messy, so we don't really want to deal with division at all.